Hi, Larry. It's Michael Pierce. Uh, on your call the other day, uh, Linda Balma asked a couple of questions about, um, well, first of all, about vibrations and what we attract. And then she went on to ask if um, it was worth working with people that you felt were really negative and down themselves and hard to work with, and how long that could maybe take for somebody that wanted to fix things but was really negative and you saw some glimmer of hope and you wanted to work with them. And uh, I have an answer to that question. And uh, to explain it better, I'm going to tell a short story. It wasn't my place to share this on your call because, yeah, I don't know. But I'd like you to listen to what I have to say. And if you think it's appropriate, I would like to share it with the Mind Intensive group. So this story goes back to about five years ago uh, when I first started taking my natural health food product. Uh, one way I was promoting it was I had a small booth in the little mobile cart, like, you know, four foot by six and a half feet long. Uh, about seven feet tall, uh, signs on either side, you know, a little pulled up thing with storage inside. And I was part of my natural health food product under a title called Cherry Power, which had anti-inflammatory and uh, sleep benefits. And I was promoting it in a mall in an area where the average age of my customer was about 75 years old. Because I thought it was a perfect place to be. The rent was cheap because the mall was a bit slow. And I actually had a chance to talk and meet the customers. And um, during that experience, um, the more time I spent in the mall, the more older people uh, I met, and they got comfortable with me, and uh, we would develop rapport, and at least once a week, because I was only there once a week, somebody I knew at the mall would come to me and explain to me that they recently found out they were terminally ill. Now, that was kind of funny, because some of these people I'd only talked to for like half an hour, or, you know, 10 minutes at a time, three or four weeks in a row, and invariably, you know, a month later, they were passed, and it's like, weird stuff going on. Um, so I did that for about a year and a half uh, before my heart attack and it was after my heart attack when I was starting to recover I figured out what had been going on because uh, in the interim period uh, the six months after the heart attack I hadn't been in and around the mall at all I'd also lost about another 10 or 20 pounds but I went into the mall one afternoon because there was a book sale going on I'm a real book nut I have a huge collection as you can see behind me of books and that's not all of them um, sticking to the story uh, as I went through the mall I saw two or three of the older people that six eight nine ten months ago were regulars once a week coming by my booth for a sample or to talk or to chat or just to say hi and be polite uh, and they didn't recognize me. I hadn't changed a lot. I'd lost like 30 more pounds, you know, maybe 60 from the big guy in the back you'd seen, uh, down about 220, 210 on my way back down to healthy. And uh, they didn't recognize me. And that was weird. And then I got to doing some thinking about the whole thing. And what had been going on is when I was unhealthy, overweight, uh, had congestive heart failure, I was resonating a really low vibration. Um, so that other people that were terminally ill or at least very sick would feel really comfortable around me because we had the same vibration and like was attacking like. Um, long story short, as I got healthier, I had less resonance with these people, less of them would stop and talk to me, less of them were less likely to recognize me. Uh, I really do believe that uh, if you don't believe there's a dead body on the street, you could walk outside and miss the dead body, not because it isn't there, but because you don't believe it exists. So the very same principles going on here, uh, as my vibration energy level increased, and this is where it goes to answer Linda's question, I started attracting more and more healthy type people. And once I was really healthy and starting to wean myself off my pills, uh, I started getting around some really positive people. And as I became healthier and better adjusted and fixed my own improper thinking, because when you've been clinically depressed, 300 pounds, suicidal, just want to die, you're in a really negative place. And as you recover and you put the pieces of your life back together, it's sort of like climbing up to this never-ending ladder. And you don't know if you're ever going to get daylight or see the end of it, but you know you just have to keep moving forward into the light because you don't want to go back there ever. So I'm finding this whole thing freeing and no matter how negative, no matter how depressed, if you see that glimmer of hope, if the person's reaching out their hand, if they're trying, if they're making an effort, I think you should work with them. Um, you should give them some of your time. 
maybe cut it to short doses, five or 10 minutes, maybe only spend that once a week with them, you know, come back, see how they're doing, and check with them, that sort of thing, whatever you can manage. But don't give up on anybody. Um, a lot of people didn't believe that I'd ever sort out my issues. And I am healthy, happy, still married. I have two wonderful kids and three grandkids and dead center of my universe. And I am a stay-at-home grandparent. I work half-time doing deliveries. I work together half of my life uh, trying to explain how I survived and why I think my way back to health is the best way for everybody. I won't go into that here now. It's not appropriate. But uh, we are what we think about most. And when I was depressed, I was attracting people that wanted to die. When I was really sick, I was comfortable and attracted people that wanted to die. I was so attractive they would tell me their life stories. As I got healthier, I became less attractive to those people and then to me. Um, now when I go to groups and functions, I go to a Toastmasters group and there's 10 or 11 of 20 members and they're all healthy, energetic, active, healthy business people with moving forward in their life because like attracts like. So hang out with people like you want to be, not people you don't want to be. There's another lesson for everybody in the group. It just gets out to the group for anybody that's listening. Uh, fill your life with what you want, what you don't want. Uh, the glass could be half empty or half full, but... Uh, I prefer to look at it as half full, and every day of my life gets better, partly because of the work I'm doing on myself, and every time I do more work on myself, I get better, I get stronger, I get healthier, I get better focused, that improves my outcomes and the way things work for me, and yeah, it's just one step at a time, um, but don't give up until they make you give up on them, because everybody can turn it around if they want to, just avoid the ones that don't want to, because... Uh, they still believe they can't do it. And I know it just means I don't know how. So thank you, Larry, and I hope this answers your question. And uh, take care and enjoy your day. That's blessings from near the grave.